Hi there! Today I will be covering the light sensitivity of F. A. Meroptera, commonly known as mayflies. In my presentation today, I'll cover six research papers that seek to explore the range of light sensitivity experienced by different mayfly species. This knowledge is vital to managing swarms around roads and bridges as mayflies become a hazard during their mating periods when they perish onto the asphalt. By using different methods, these researchers uh, tracked mayfly behavior and preferences. The first article I'll cover today seeks to answer the question, why do mayflies lay their eggs and mass on dry asphalt roads? Water imitating polarized light reflected from asphalt attracts Ephemeroptera. Over the past decade, mayflies have been observed to swarm in large numbers, mate above, and land on dry asphalt roads in close vicinity to their emergence sites. Once completed with copulation, the females will lay their eggs onto the roads instead of ovipositing them onto the water surface. It's important to understand this issue so it can be prevented in the future. Researchers hypothesize that asphalt roads mimic a highly horizontally polarized water surface to water-seeking mayflies. This hypothesis was tested over two summer mating seasons um, in multiple choice tests. Water, asphalt, and air temperature were measured alongside the different test surfaces, as well as their polarization. In the figure on the right, you can see the test surfaces measured. The materials used were black shiny plastic, white shiny plastic, shiny aluminum foil, slightly shiny black cloth, matte black cloth, and white math white matte cloth. <laughs> you can see their degree of polarization and e-vector alignment, which was recorded using video polarimetry. A mountain creek also received the same testing. After the mayflies emerged, both visual observations and video recordings of the swarming behavior above the asphalt road and test surfaces were recorded. Photography was also used to document the landing and egg laying of mayflies on the asphalt road and test surfaces. Using the video polymeter, the polarization of light was measured through three color channels of the video camera, red, green, and blue. The attractiveness of asphalt surfaces to mayflies is notably influenced by factors such as surface smoothness and darkness, with smoother and darker patches being more appealing to egg-laying females. Additionally, mayflies exhibit a distinct preference for horizontally polarized reflected light as demonstrated by their attractive to the shiny black plastic sheets. While higher air temperatures above asphalt roads did exist, um, they contributed to longer uh, reproductive activity, although it is unlikely that this is the sole factor attracting mayflies to the concrete. Phototaxis or attraction to light does not appear to play a significant role in their preference for asphalt, otherwise they also would have been more attracted to the aluminum foil. Overall, the asphalt roads offer multiple visual stimuli that attract mayflies, including visibility of the sky, horizontal polarization of reflected light, and slightly elevated temperatures. This preference for asphalt over natural bodies of water underscores the importance of visual cues in mayfly reproductive behavior. Now on to Article 2, Degrees of Polarization of Reflected Light Eliciting Polarotaxis in Dragonflies, Mayflies, and Tabinidflies. Shiny dark surfaces made by humans, such as oil spills, asphalt, and plastic, cause polarized light pollution and may act as polarized ecological traps for insects. Using imaging polymetry in the red, green, and blue parts of the spectrum, the threshold, P, uh, ventral polarization sensitivity was measured. Researchers hypothesized and sought to study the minimum degree of linear polarization of reflected light that can elicit positive polarotaxis from given insect species, allowing measuring and monitoring of the extent of polarized light pollution of artificial surfaces in the human environment. This was done by using trays of varying colors which were placed on an asphalt road near a mountain creek. The trays were positioned on a horizontally polarizing black plastic sheet aimed to attract the mayflies. The trays were shuffled every hour to accommodate the swarming behavior of the mayflies, which typically occurred near sunset. Mayflies captured in these trays were preserved in alcohol later for identification. Uh, in this photo, you can see the test site in Hungary of the trays as well as the river that they are next to. Using imaging polymetry, 
Um, they measured the red, green, and blue parts of the spectrum. However, in the study, the polarization patterns of the shaded trays captured in the blue spectral range were used exclusively. Comparable patterns were seen in red and green spectra when the trays were exposed to the sunlight. The limits of the polarization sensitivity threshold eliciting positive in the mayfly species was dependent on the red, blue, or green part of the spectrum. The darker, the, sh the darker and the shiny um, horizontally polarizing test surface, the higher degree of polarization of reflected light, which improved the attractiveness to the mayflies. You can see the number recorded at the site on the table here. And the next study I'll cover is positive polarotaxis in a mayfly that never leaves the water surface. Pol polarotactic water detection in Algenia longicata. The purpose of the study is to determine if species use horizontal polarization of reflected light to detect water, even if they never leave the body of water which they spawn from. It was hypothesized that species may not require additional sensitivity to polarization for water recognition due to their hydroreceptors on their wings and cerci, and as well as the intensity of light reflected from the water surface. This was all tested by capturing mayflies using hand nets on a motorboat and individually releasing them above test surfaces laid onto the ground. Polarization characteristics of the test surfaces and surface of the river were also measured using video polymetry technology across red, green, and blue spectrums. It was found that black plastic exhibited a high level of horizontal polarization, as we've already seen in previous studies. Um, and this helped researchers infer that positive polarotaxis as the shiny plastic sheets were the only surfaces to affect the mayfly behavior. This suggests that species detect water through the horizontal polarization of reflected light. Next, we'll look at the effect of electric bridge lighting at night on mayfly activity. This investigated the effect of lighting on mayflies, including the effectiveness of correlated color, temperature, chromacity, ultraviolet radiation shielding, and polarization. The purpose of the study was to identify sustainable strategies to enhance the existing bridge lighting system, which would improve traffic safety and minimize ecological impacts of nighttime lighting. The data was captured using digital cameras at three different test locations along the bridge with different light types over the course of multiple spawning periods. Data was then analyzed by using automated counting methods um, for processing and quantifying the number of mayflies in the images documented on site. The results of the study show that when UV radiation is present under the bridge, the number of mayflies on top of the bridge is reduced. Similarly, the number of mayflies on top of the bridge decreased when the green light and blue-green polarized light was used under that specific bridge section. Additionally, light intensity did not have a Im significant impact on the number of mayflies. Next, we'll touch on method to improve the survival of night swarming mayflies near bridges and areas of distracting light pollution. Lamplit bridges are observed as an ecological trap for mayflies, blocking upstream directed compository flight for the female. It, uh, piles of female carcasses and eggs cover bridges at the end of swarming periods, making roads slippery and dangerous. Researchers hypothesize that using unpolarized beacon lights above the river surface to attract egg-laying female mayflies to the water, you can prevent them from perishing near urban light sources outside of the river. The river was monitored by researchers who activated LED floodlights when mayflies first appeared, and once the mayfly swarm grew significantly around the beacons, photographs were taken. Swarming periods lasted about an hour, during which the beacons were switched off three times, um, to demonstrate that the mayflies were leaving the river and getting trapped at the nearby street lamps when the beacons were switched off. Later, the street lamps were evaluated by counting the attracted mayflies on the images manually. You can see in figure two of the field experiments with marked street lights, S1, S2, as well as R1 and R2. And then in figure three on the right, you can see how the mayfly swarms to the light surfaces. <coughs> Um, in this video here, you can see the mayflies swarming around the beacons underneath the bridge, 
And then actually behind the swarm, you can also see the nearby street lamp, which the mayflies were attracted to once the beacons were turned off. It was found that mayflies did not leave the river until the beacons turned off, in which the mayfly swarms would disperse onto the nearby street lamps. Once the mayflies moved to the lamps, their numbers decreased as the mayflies got exhausted and dropped down to the asphalt. Another minor portion of mayflies became aware of other nearby street lamps and actually moved lamp to lamp, which decreased the numbers at the, addi- at the initial lamp. Next article I'll cover is the spectral optimization of beacon lights for the protection of night swarming mayflies. This article is basically seeking to improve upon the beacon systems which were already studied in the previous study. This study seeks to enhance the emission spectrum of beacon lights to protect mayflies from swarming bridge lights and subsequently creating hazards on the road. Additionally, research evaluated the appeal of various different light sources commonly used in public lighting. By studying wavelength dependence on mayfly phototaxis and the attractiveness of light sources, already existing beacon structures may be optimized. This hypothesis was tested using seven LED light sources to attract the emerging mayflies. As they swarmed in front of the light sources, photographs were taken above with flash in succession to be analyzed. You can see in figure four, the image right here, um, the different light sources that were displayed across the bridge. The study found that blue light source was the most attractive and the attractiveness of each light source gradually decreased with an increasing wavelength. Light sources with emission spectra dominated by short wavelength components were more attractive than other sources with longer wavelength components. In figure eight, you can see the blue beacon lights permanently installed on the bridge piers. To conclude, the light sensitivity in adult mayflies during their swarming season reveals the intricate interaction between biology and the man-made environment. As we've explored, species, this species navigates the world by finding horizontal polarization to mate above and lay eggs onto. This would typically be the river surface. Um, and through these studies, we gain not only a deeper understanding of fascinating insects, but also a greater appreciation for the profound ways in which they are shaped by their surroundings in the modern world. May these studies inspire further inquiry and appreciation for the intricacies of Ephemeroptera, Additionally, um, this will help us in, help uh, help us to see how we can improve our human world alongside the entire ecosystem. Mahalo for listening to my presentation, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.